indiscretions, transposition anomalies, agent absence, and many others, we are of the view that the pointed irregularities and irregularities were not of such magnitude as to affect the final result of the presidential election. We will delve deeper into the details of this uh, issue in our recent judgments. Last issue, what relieves and orders can the court grant? Under Article 163.3 of the Constitution, it is provided that the Supreme Court will have a exclusive original jurisdiction to hear and determine disputes relating to the election of the office of the president arising under Article 40, 140. And Article 140 provides, I quote, a person may file a petition in the Supreme Court to challenge the election of the president-elect within seven days after the date of the declaration of the results of the presidential election. Two, within 14 days after the filing of a petition under Cross 1, the Supreme Court shall hear and determine the petition and its decision shall be final. If the Supreme Court determines the election of the president elect to be invariant, a fresh election shall be held within 60 days after the determination. In exercising its jurisdiction pursuant to these provisions, the court sits as an election court with a mandate to determine the validity or otherwise of the election of the president elect. It is clear to us that the jurisdiction of the court is quite circumscribed in terms of the orders or leaves it can grant following the hearing and determination of the election petition under Article 140 of the Constitution. In the event the court determines that the election of the president-elect is invalid, it must make an order nullifying the election. Consequently, it has also to make an order directing IMBC to hold a fresh election within 60 days after the determination. Should the court determine that the election of the president-elect is valid, it shall issue a declaration to that effect. The court has then, as a matter of course, to make an order dismissing the petition with or without cost, as the case may be. In the strict sense, therefore, these are the only orders that the court may make under the Constitution. The court cannot assume jurisdiction that goes beyond the purview of Articles 163.3 and 140 of the Constitution. However, nothing stops the court from issuing orders or reliefs by way of recommendations. Indeed, since 20, 2013, this court has issued many recommendations arising from the determination of three petitions challenging the election of the president-elect. The recommendations are meant to improve our electoral landscape and ends end in the development of our democracy. In this regard, this court has been greatly aided by the contributions also of the Amici uh, Curie. And the court places a heavy premium on those briefs that were filed and those which were admitted. Uh, the final orders made by the courts. This is a unanimous decision of the court and we make the following orders. One, the presidential election petition number E005 of 2022 as consolidated with the presidential election petition numbers E001, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 8 of 2022 are hereby dismissed. As a consequence, we declare the election of the first respondent as president elect to be varied under Article 143 of the Constitution. This being a matter cutting across the public interest, we order that each party do bear their own costs. It is so ordered 
And finally, the court has asked me to also acknowledge, although we'll do it in the long 